This lesson is on simplest form, or it can be called lowest terms. So you might hear someone say that you need to reduce a fraction. The steps that I've listed are steps that are really simplified to help you to, ask, to get in the habit of asking yourself certain questions in order to make sure that your fraction is in simplest form. But what you want to do is find a common factor for both the numerator and denominator. If you find the greatest common factor, that's even better because that just means it's even quicker for you to simplify the fraction. So what that means though, if you look at the first step, you want to ask yourself what number can go into both the numerator and the denominator evenly. So here we have the numerator is 2, the denominator is 4. If we look at the numerator 2 and we think of what numbers can go into 2, well, the only numbers that can go into 2 are 1 and 2. Now, in all of these problems, we don't want to divide by 1 because that's not going to really help us simplify anything since any number divided by 1 stays the same. So when we're asking for a number that can go into both the numerator and denominator, we're not going to include 1. But we know 2 can go into 2, and 2 can also go into 4. So we're going to divide both of them by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Then we ask ourselves, is there a number that can go evenly into this numerator and denominator? Since nothing but 1 could go into both 1 and 2, we would say our answer is in simplest form. When we go to the next fraction, 35 over 40. We can think of some of the factors of 35 to help us decide what might be able to also go into 40. So we know in 35, we know 7 times 5 is 35, but 7 can't go into 40. But the other factor, 5, 5 can go into 40. So we can divide both the numerator and denominator by 5. 5 goes into 35 7 times, and 5 goes into 40 8 times. Then we ask ourselves, is there another number that can go into both 7 and 8 evenly? Nope, the only thing that goes into 7 besides 1 is 7, and 7 can't go into 8 evenly. So 7 eighths is in simplest form. When we get to 10 sixteenths, we think of factors of 10. We know 1 times 10 is 10, but 10 can't go into 16. We know 2 times 5 is 10. 2 can go into 10 and 2 can go into 16. But 5 can go into 10 but not into 16. So we're going to use 2 because it can go into both 10 and 16. 10 divided by 2 is 5 and 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then we see if there's any number that can go into both 5 and 8 evenly. Mr. Munz, please call the office. Mr. Munz, please call the office. There's no number that can go into both 5 and 8 evenly, so we circle it, and that's our simplest form answer. 1 8 36. We know 2 can go into 8 and 2 can go into 36, so we could divide them both by 2. 2 goes into 8 4 times, and 2 goes into 36 18 times. And when we ask ourselves the question, can anything go into both 4 and 18 evenly? Yes, 2 can go into 4, and 2 can go into 18. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. And when we check to see, can anything go into both 2 and 9 evenly? No, it can't, because the only thing that can go into 2 is 2, and 2 can't go into 9 evenly. So that would be simplest form. Now you might be asking yourself, well wait, 4 can go into both 8 and 36. We have 4 is what we call the greatest common factor. And if we use the greatest common factor of 4 and divide, we get 2 ninths in one step. It doesn't matter if it takes you more than one step, like here, to put the fraction in simplest form, or if it takes you just one step using the greatest common factor. As long as you reduce the fraction all the way to simplest form, your answer will be correct.